When I was younger, I used to be completely obsessed with, for reasons that I can't entirely explain, those super bounce balls that you pelt at the ground and they go rocketing up into the air. I used to love throwing them from the highest place I could get to, I used to love pegging them really hard, um, basically I just like to cause as much chaos with them as I possibly could. Letting them off in a really confined space is fun, and yeah, just, they're really fun. But now that I'm older, I wonder things to myself, like, why do they bounce so high, and how can I make them bounce higher, and what would happen if they were made from a different material, and what would happen if I... Okay, so the reason that these super bounce balls bounce very high is to do with physics. I mean, yeah, technically everything when you get back to it is to do with physics, but like... Okay, before we can really get into this, there are a couple of rules, laws, that you have to understand. Rule number one, the rule of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. There is a consistent amount of energy within the universe. Basically, all that happens is that it's converted from one form to another. So, for example, movement energy might be turned into heat, or sound, or light. Rule number two, potential energy. This is energy that has been transferred to an object and is being, for want of a better word, held in that object until it's either transferred to another object or is converted into another form, like heat, or light, or sound. Rule number three is elasticity. Elasticity is a measure of how well something will return to its original form after being stretched or compressed. Something like a brick has a very low elasticity, and something like rubber has a very high elasticity. Rule number four is that every force is met with an equal and opposing force. This basically means that any time an object exerts a force upon something, that object then has an equal amount of force exerted on it in the opposite direction. When you throw a super ball, what you're doing is transferring some of your kinetic energy, that's movement energy, into the ball. The harder you throw the ball, the more force you use when you throw it, the more energy you're transferring into the ball. This energy is then stored in the ball as potential energy. When the ball hits the floor, the potential energy that was in it is transformed once again into kinetic energy and it spreads across the floor. But because super balls are made of rubber, and rubber is both highly elastic and prone to deforming, what actually happens is that when the ball hits the ground, it flattens out just for a fraction of a second before the kinetic energy is actually transferred back into the ball and it retains its shape. But because the ball is so elastic, because it's so eager to get back to its original shape, this whole process happens incredibly quickly. So quickly, in fact, that the equal and opposing force causes the ball to rocket back up into the air. Okay, so how do we make sure the ball bounces as high as possible? Well, the obvious answer now is make sure that it's made out of a highly elastic material, such as rubber or something else. Secondly, we need to make sure that the ball is completely solid. For instance, if you try and bounce a deflated basketball, it won't really do much at all, basically because the energy when the basketball hits the ground spreads out far too easily and the opposing force isn't enough when it comes back in to give it the lift that it needs to get off the ground again. The same basic principle about the energy spreading and going back into the ball is why you need to make sure you use a very solid surface to bounce your ball off. Basically, if you use something like loamy ground, which is really good at absorbing impacts, it's going to absorb all of your kinetic energy and it's not going to have as much to give back to the ball. Finally, it's important to note that the ball will never return to its original height because some of the energy is actually transferred into heat and sound and friction and that kind of thing. So if you can reduce those factors to an absolute minimum, you will get the maximum bounce factor possible. Right, so we've got the theory out of the way, let's go do an experiment. I bought as many bouncy balls as I could reasonably get my hands on, which turns out to be about 50 and they're about this big and it's going to be really fun. So what we're going to go and do now is drop them off my friend's balcony onto possibly some passerby, I don't know, let's see what happens. Okay, so this experiment is the ball drop from my friend's balcony. This is the height we are dropping from, all the way down to here. The first experiment is bouncy balls, and the second is things that hypothetically shouldn't bounce very well at all. Three, two, one. Firing ballistics in three, two, one. 
three, two, the dog is going off, one. Three, two, one. One, two, three. That was phenomenal. Subscribe to my channel, like and share the video, do these things and I love you forever.